Hello, my name is Stefan Kraus from Byte the Bytes, and in this tutorial video I'm going to explain you how to use the texturing capabilities of World Creator. So as you can see I already have created a really nice terrain and now let's see how we can texturize it, looking at making it looking real cool. So first you switch over to the texturing tab and you're going to select the texture of your of your own, what you want actually. So I'm going to use a, a grass texture at, uh, at the very first one. So just drag and drop this texture into this field here. There you go. And now each time you drag and drop a texture into this field, it uh, will be collected in, inside this list here. You can uh, duplicate a texture, you can remove a texture, you can clear a texture. Later you will see that you also can change the the order of the texture at which layer it should be uh, should be used. Um, you can also export a global color map of your entire terrain that you have created uh, once you finally have textured it or you just also can exp uh, export all splat maps um, that you can further utilize in other applications. So now if you want to change this texture then you all you have to do is just to drag and drop another one into this field here for example so you quickly can change them. Uh, we also support the uh, addition of a normal map, so you can place a normal map into that one here also. Um, the next one is quite interesting. You have a lock size to dimension checkbox here. If I'm checking this, you can see that the whole texture is applied on the entire terrain as a single tile. So usually you would use this uh, if you're working with uh, satellite images. So I'm going to uh, adjust the tile size again, the tile offset and the tile uh, Y. So this is uh, best explained by moving in a little bit. Let me fly in here. And now if I'm going to uh, offset this you can see that the texture is wandering on the terrain. So this is just for a little bit of fine tuning that you can further use when texturing your terrain. So the metallic one is, uh, it just describes how, how metallic your, uh, your surface should look like. So because you're doing a terrain, you don't want to have any metallic effects applied on it. And now let's see the more interesting things, which, is, uh, which are the distribution settings. But uh, there's one thing with the Unity terrain, if you have applied the very first texture, um, the distribution settings makes no sense because uh, you have one texture applied over the entire terrain, so it's no nothing like uh, I only want to have uh, this texture applied over here, and the rest should be black. This is not supported, so that's why you will have to use another another texture. I'm going to just simply add a new texture in here, adding the normal map, adjusting a little bit the size size again. Now you're going to select this texture, select also with the visualize heat maps, and then you can see that um, all those red parts here. Are um, saying that this texture will be applied over the entire terrain. If I'm clicking generate, you can see that this texture has been fully applied over the terrain. It uh, actually completely overrides uh, the very first one because uh, uh, the texturing system inside uh, World Creator is, uh, is layer based. So it gives you um, much more possibilities and actually a really perfect texturing capability. However, I can show you how to uh, mix them all together, it's not a problem. So now let's see that we distribute that texture um, on several criteria. But before doing that perfectly, I'm going to walk through each uh, setting so you can see what is possible at all. So a mask can be used for, uh, just as uh, uh, also explained in the filter tutorial, mask can be used to, um, to uh, only distribute a texture at specific locations. And those locations usually are the, uh, are, the, are, the, are the brighter areas of a texture. Saying if you apply a, a, a grayscale texture like this one here, then the, uh, the, the brighter areas are, are going to be used to, to, uh, to apply the, uh, the texture, depending on the, on, the, on the brightness of those pixels. So to enable that, you just open this and select the static mask. So now you have actually two options. You can first drag and drop in an existing uh, mask, which I'm going to do now. For example, we are having some, like this, a black texture. If I'm going to use this one here, drag and drop, don't cover it, no. Um, you will see that nothing will happen actually, because black means nothing of this texture should be applied. Now you could uh, 
create a texture on your own uh, somewhere in Photoshop or in any other tool or you just go and click to edit mask. If you click that one here you can start painting on it like this. And if you now hit apply to mask and generate you will see that this texture has been applied on the mask that I have painting on. Okay, so you can also invert this mask, giving you the difference. You can use a threshold, I'm going to show it like this. You can use a threshold to uh, further adjust a little bit the surrounding areas of this mask. This is useful if you're having a mask like, uh, like a noise map. I'm going to show you quickly. If I would have one, here we go, like this. Let's apply that one here. I'm using the threshold now. You can see it a little bit better what's going to happen. So, another one is the contrast that you can further use to fine tune a little bit in combination with the threshold. So, another selection you can do is uh, using a dynamic mask if you just want to apply some 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 noise over this terrain and don't want to paint on it then you could use the Perlin uh, noise generator which is uh, fully included in world creator and this one is a real time generator so you can change those settings here and adjust a little bit the seed value you can use the octaves to making it more more smooth or more crispy you can use noise depth to navigate three dimensional through the texture further fine tuning again so let's see what it would look like. Oh, I will have to uh, increase a little bit the weight modification so we can see it a little bit better. There you go. So the next and the last option is the Road River. Um, the idea is that uh, World Creator is able to uh, create r roads and rivers. It's uh, it's a feature that can be found under the post uh, tab here. And if you create a road and river path. Then a path is created and overlaid on the terrain. So sometimes it's really useful to, uh, if you're having some kind of a street texture or, or just a road texture or whatever, just to apply that uh, along that path. So that's what you could do if you select a road river. Then um, you will see that uh, if you have created a few rivers or roads, you can select them here, and those uh, those paths are used as masks. So the texture will be only applied along the path. So, let's get over to the next one, um, the color pick map. That's also interesting if you're working with uh, satellite images. So I'll quickly show you this. Um, I'm going quickly to show you this on a, on, a, on a sample, like maybe this one here. So we could just drag and drop a texture in here, and let's visualize the heat maps. And now let's go and select the color, like maybe something like like this. Something, some brown colors. And I use this threshold to see which parts of the texture should be taken out. You can see that if you look at this part here, this equals that one here. If you look at these parts here, this is exactly what is what is that one here. And um, so it, it is used to simply, this color is used to, 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 to look up into that texture where, where we do have this color in a specific color range. And um, if it's found and it just fits, then this color or this position of this texture is being used and transformed into this uh, terrain space. And this means that uh, uh, this texture will be placed over those parts here. So this is pretty cool if you have some kind of a satellite image and you want to select green parts and texturize a specific uh, color, green color range with a specific texture. Okay, not going to use this also. So uh, we deselect it. And heading to the mean sea level. What a mean sea level is something that I would like to explain to you in another tutorial called environmental settings in Cyber Creator. The idea is that you set up a mean sea level by also a water plane or whatever, and uh, you just tell World Creator 
um, to apply this texture below or above that plane. So every time you move the plane in your scene, the texture um, is updated on automatically and all you and, and, and if you make all the texturing and all the object placement and even the filters dependent on the mean sea level, then the terrain will um, update completely and automatically. So this will be shown in, in another tutorial video. So let's head over to the terrain height. It's just the same as already explained in the tutorial video with the terrain filters. I'm going to show you anyway show quickly here. Um, the same goes of course for the terrain slope. Selecting the slope in degrees. this and you can use those smoothness to further fine-tune and adjust a little bit texturing and uh, one thing there's a follow Sun if you select this then the Sun Sun's direction is used to uh, define where it hits the terrain and this can be used to uh, apply this texture only at a specific sun direction or even at the opposite of the sun, so like shadow parts. So, now back to the terrain height again because there's something that I really would like to explain to you. Um, imagine this could be a snow texture, so why imagine if we can make it a snow texture. Let's quickly switch over to a snow texture. And now you want to say that uh, you want to have snow only at a specific uh, height level, so like maybe like something like this. Uh, now you would hit generate, and now let's see how it would look like if I'm going down. It looks more like a rock texture anyway, so but it doesn't matter. I'll show you the effect. If I'm going down at that level, you can see that it's really straight. It's just like a line. Now, this isn't really natural, so that's why you have the height noise type here that you would select. For example, a dynamic one. And now comes the really fun part. Let's move on a little bit. And now you could use the height noise factor to modulate that a little bit. As you can see now, it, it's getting really irregular. And you could use the height noise scale to adjust that irregulation giving you much better results, more natural look. So let me quickly uh, uh, switch over to uh, some other nice snow texture, making it more beautiful. So how, how that's how it would look like with this height noise type feature. Of course, you could also use a static mask instead of a dynamic mask. So, we're not going to use that, and uh, let's move on to the cavity feature now. So we have that cavity here. Um, actually, with the cavity you can select the high peaks and adjust those nice settings. So let me quickly turn down a little bit the resolution, else we will have it be that smooth when using this feature. Um, you can see that I can control the peak level and smooth it out a little bit and also the strength and so on. And if you use the concave value, then you have the opposite. So it means actually you are having the, the valley areas or the areas within. So I have just selected the yes, terrain height, it's reduced a little bit so we have more control over it. And that's what you can control with this. So if uh, you have a really nice eroded terrain, then this feature could be used to uh, to get exactly in the between the caps. And now let's increase the weight also, something like this, and hit generate. Okay, now we have <laughs> applied snow over it. So let's get back to this one here. And let's make this terrain look really beautiful now. We could now increase the resolution again. There we go. And increase the weight a little bit. 
so we can see more. Good. Now um, let's use uh, rock texture and let's finalize this terrain. So here we go. Two. Now I want that tag that one here applied only at a specific slope range. Something like this maybe. 45. And just increase the slope. Start. Something like that. Okay. Increase a little bit. The weight. And go for it. So let's just turn off the terrain creation. So we're saving a lot of time. We only have our texturing. And now, um, yeah, let's finalize it by applying also some snow at least. At last. And uh, see how it will look like. So, using the snow on the uh, convex areas here, and say be that one here, something like that maybe, that looks quite cool. Iterate, go for it. Here we go. Now. We're done, and you see that it was very quick. You also saw that all the possibilities that you can do and perform with this texturing techniques of World Creator. You can combine each setting as you have seen that I um, uh, uh, had that height value reduced. You you saw that the cavity didn't work on the on the lower areas because only the areas in uh, uh, in, in in that given height range was taken uh, were taken into account. So you can mix them all together, giving you fantastic results. Okay, so that's for it now. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, thanks for watching and please check out our other tutorial videos on our website and on our YouTube channel. Bye bye.